What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Logistical Styles coming at you with another video. And today we're gonna do something different. It was starting out as a product review, but I decided to scrap it and do something totally different. Welcome back YouTube. Like I said, I was originally gonna do a product review, but after doing some research and waking up and seeing more videos on the same topic, I decided maybe a product review probably isn't what I should do. The product I'm talking about is this. This is the Mackie Thump Go. It's a fairly new product. It came out at the, I think the end of last year or the beginning of this year, 2022. And it's gotten really great reviews all over. I've seen nothing but positive uh, mentions about it. And I just recently purchased one. I did a little swap out and tried to get something that would be more, more suited for my wedding ceremony situation. So this is what I picked up over the weekend. And I actually just yesterday recorded a pretty thorough uh, review of the product. And then I woke up this morning and saw Digital DJ Tips has their uh, product review of it on and then I realized that maybe what YouTube doesn't need right now at least for me is yet another product review of this uh, speaker but instead what I'm going to do is show you how I'm using it or how I intend to use it. I've gotten a good bit of uh, testing with it over the past couple of days been using it and so far the battery has been absolutely great for my needs um, the inputs and the options that it gives you have really been perfect for my needs and I can see a lot of different situations where I would be using this speaker. I'm actually already thinking about getting a second one because uh, I can see me needing two somewhere near in the future. But for now, I just wanna show you how I intend to use it. I wanna to put together a completely battery powered setup, something that will allow me to not be tied to uh, having an electrical outlet available, something that is not going to require me to carry my big laptop everywhere I go, but still be able to DJ, uh, play music without the need for any of those things. I've come up with something and it's actually a combination of equipment I already have, but this was like the missing piece. So I'm going to be using the Pioneer Rev 1, which I bought about a month ago. I haven't done a video on it yet, but if you follow me on um, social media and you've seen the, my gig postings, you've seen that I've been using the Pioneer Rev 1 at some of my smaller, quicker gigs. I'm gonna be using that mainly because it is bus powered, meaning it does not require any um, external power source. In addition to that, I'm going to be using my iPad Air fourth generation. This is gonna be using a uh, USB-C connection, so I have to get an adapter to connect the Rev1 to the lap to the iPad and the iPad is going to be running DJ Pro. So this should be really interesting. I'll be using that. I'm started using DJ Pro a lot more in the past month or so. Um, I know there's been some big updates to the software this year and the app itself. So it feels like it's something I can use more than just for wedding ceremonies. Maybe if I want to actually DJ somewhere, do a quick set, I can use that to DJ with. So I'm gonna use that. And I think the only other thing I may add is a wireless mic. I have the option of using the Rode Wireless Go, which I'm actually using now to record this audio. So I'm gonna use a second mic, which I've also reviewed on this channel before, and that's the Alvox Con a mic that has a little receiver that's charged by a USB connection, but it runs on a battery power, and then the handheld itself is battery powered. So the goal is to be able to basically get in the middle of a field that has no electricity and be able to play music and DJ um, with no issues. So I'm going to put this all together. We're going to do a quick uh, location change. We'll go outside into my yard, which is pretty big, and um, we'll go over that. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to point out some things that I did learn as I was doing research for my review. So this will be more of a video about my self-contained all-in-one or wireless uh, DJ system and some pointers and tidbits about this speaker. So let's go ahead and do a quick uh, Location change and we'll get right back to it. Okay, YouTube So here we are out on my deck out in nature and I'm going to show you Just quickly how I set up 
or how easy it is to set up a battery powered solution for DJing. Um, ceremonies, small parties, small events, in-store events, whatever, just using the Smacky uh, Thump Go to my Pioneer uh, DDJ Rev 1. But I will go ahead and open it up and um, I'll show you everything. Remember, this is all battery powered. We're all, everything I'm using does not require to be plugged in in order to use. So first of all, we're gonna start with the uh, Thump Go. Go ahead and just pop it up on a speaker stand right here. Then out of my little carrying case, I've got my wireless LoxCon mic. I've got uh, my iPad. I even got a battery pack for that. I've got my laptop stand. Pull that up, set that up. Put my iPad on top of there. Then I have this right here. This is a USB-C uh, hub. It's made by Anker. It's a USB-C on this side because this is the iPad uh, Air fourth generation and it has a USB-C connection on it. So this will allow me to have regular USB 3.0 connections, uh, extra USB-C connection, SD card, and another memory card, and even has a HDMI output as well. So this is a really handy thing to have. So I'm gonna use that, connect that to my iPad. This is a chroma cable. You could use the cable that came with the device, but I purchased these a while ago. They're supposed to be a better quality cable. Uh, so I'm gonna use that, plug that right into one of the USB ports. Then I have this cable right here. This is a, just basically a really long uh, auxiliary cable. It's 3.5 millimeter tip ring sleeve on both ends. And I'm using this RCA to 3.5 millimeter adapter. I'll show you how I hooked that up shortly. And I think that's it as far as cabling needs. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the Rev 1. Pioneer Rev 1 battery. It's not battery powered, it's bus powered. So it gets its power from the USB connection. No need for a uh, outlet. I'm gonna plug these RCAs into the back of the Rev 1. Take this other 3.5 end and I'm gonna plug it into the auxiliary input on channel two for the Mackie Thump Go. Plug in my USB connection here. And when I do plug it in, I'm gonna connect my iPad. When I turn my iPad on, unlock it, I can see the lights come up on the controller showing that it's got power and it's ready to go. Uh, let me go ahead and turn on the speaker itself. And then here's my microphone uh, receiver. This is, I have two options. I can plug it directly into the uh, controller or I can plug it into the uh, mixer on the back of the speaker. Now, why would I do one over the other? Well, first of all, the mic on the Rev1 is not that great. It works, but you only get a volume knob up or down and that's it. There's no tone control or anything like that. Now, at the same time, there isn't any tone control on this as far as individual channels. You have different voicing modes for music, speech, monitor, and sub, but those voicing, those voicing modes affect both channels. It affects, uh, I guess, the main output as well. So why would I wanna use it on here? Well, on here, you have channel one. It gives you the option to turn on music ducking. What does music ducking mean? Music ducking means when I have music playing on channel two's input, when it senses audio coming in on channel one, it will lower the volume. So if you're a DJ and you're making announcements for during cocktail hour, telling people to come on inside or you're um, making any kind of announcement as a DJ, you don't have to worry about dropping the volume down because the music ducking feature will do that automatically. You also have on channel one, the option to choose between whether it's a line or a mic input. I'm gonna go ahead and push it in for the mic input right there. Turn that on, turn on my microphone, and we should have some kind of power 
some audio coming through. So you see that it's that very, it's, it's very simple. So now let's go ahead and get some music going. To get music going, I am using the DJ Pro app by Algorithm. I'm using that to load my music up, to play my music and control it. And I love it because when you hook it up with a device like the Rev1, it automatically maps all the controls to the software. So my pitch works, my uh, effects work, my sampler works, my cue points work, crossfader, all that stuff works perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and pull up a beat, um, pull up something here and load it in and start playing. So we got some music coming through there. Now I'm gonna turn on the microphone and start talking and we'll see how well the duck uh, feature works. Test one, test one, two, check, check, one, two, mic check. Mic check, one, two, two, two. Test, test, one, two, one, two, one, two. And the volume goes down as I talk. You can hear the volume actually drop down so my voice comes through clearer, but when I stop talking, then the volume on the music will come back up. So that's a, a really cool feature here. Yeah, this will allow me to, one, have a, a wireless microphone and not have to make changes quickly to the audio when it's time to make an announcement. It will automatically duck it down. So this is my all battery powered mobile setup. So now let's go into a couple of more features about this. This speaker does have a Bluetooth connection. And on the box, I noticed it said Bluetooth 5.0. And I hadn't really paid attention to the different variations or uh, versions of Bluetooth. So I did a little research and found out that Bluetooth 5.0 has a much bigger range than the old school Bluetooth that we know of like 30 feet or so. That's not the deal, but Bluetooth 5.0, you get up to 800 feet of range. And now that's under, that is under ideal conditions where there's no interference and not a lot of people around and other devices. But I was able to do a test when making my uh, previous versions of this video and I was able to get 160 feet away from the speaker with this iPad connected via Bluetooth and it allowed me to fade between songs, turn the volume up and down, now, when you do use Bluetooth, there is latency, so I wouldn't recommend trying to scratch or trying to trigger cue points uh, in a precise manner because there will be some delay between you doing a, f a function and then it happening or coming out of the speaker. So definitely keep that in mind when you're dealing with Bluetooth. But it is possible to just disconnect from the USB and to continue to play. Right now, I'm not paired up. You have to remember, you have to pair your device in order for it to work. It's not automatically just gonna switch over. So I have actually been able to get 165, 160 feet of distance from the speaker without having any kind of dropout, any kind of distortion between the music. Another feature is, and that's something that this speaker takes advantage of, is the ability to link to another device via Bluetooth. So Bluetooth 5.0 also gives you dual audio. It allows you to connect two devices to one Bluetooth source. So if you had two people with Bluetooth headphones on and they want to listen to music from one phone, you could connect those two devices and they both would be able to play. Same thing with this speaker. I can connect my iPad via, via Bluetooth to this speaker and then link to another identical speaker and have them both play the same thing. Now, one drawback with this is it only links the Bluetooth audio to the other speaker. It will not link the audio coming in through the mic jack to the other speaker. So you have to keep that in mind if you need to have stereo sound from the, the speaker. At that point, you might have to just use a cable and use the through output to run it via XLR cable to the other speaker. I love that the Rev1 uses bus power it does not need any kind of external power source 
That was one thing I did really consider when I was looking for a portable controller to use. I didn't want to get something big like a Rev7 or a Rain 1 or something like that because they do require an electrical outlet to connect to. And my goal is to have a completely portable setup. Now, if I wanted to, and I really want to shrink my footprint, I could also use the Newmark DJ to go to touch to. Now I do have that as well, and it does perform just as nicely with the uh, DJ app. It maps itself directly to the, pro the app as well, and it allows you to control, scroll through your library, load songs, scratch, do all that stuff. I just prefer something with a little bit bigger jog wheel, so I don't feel like I'm just doing something that the average person can do by just using an iPad and a tiny controller. This really gives me a little bit of space to do what I need to do and I don't have to worry about being cramped. I have my microphone option. This iPad gives me plenty of battery time when it's fully charged, but if I needed to, I could use this power brick right here. It's made by Pocket Juice and it has two USB ports that it can charge two different devices at the same time. And it actually, it also, you can put your cell phone on it if you have the type of cell phone that uses a, a key charger that allows you to um, charge with the surface. So just by laying it on the surface, you can charge your cell phone and then you have your two USB ports. So this will definitely get you through a party or an event, no problem. This will get you it says it gives you 12 hours of battery time. I've been playing with it on and off for the past day or two uh, as I've been out here working on the deck and doing some stuff around the house. I haven't had to recharge it yet and it's still on a green battery. So I got plenty of time and plenty of juice from this. Of course, it is a new, a new device. So rechargeable batteries do lose their uh, capacity over time, but I think I will get plenty of use out of this. And a great feature of this speaker is the fact that all you have to do is pull out or twist these two knobs right here, these screws. This cover will come off and out will pop the battery pack. You can replace the battery pack. You can buy a second one to have on hand if you do run out of uh, power. But I think this is the perfect speaker for me and my needs. And you can watch other videos to see what the sound quality is like. But I'm telling you, it's good. I've put some stress tests to it. Uh, I've had it cranking at the maximum volume and it performed well without distortion because it has a built-in um, limiter. So it will not allow you to go that past its limits. You'll get the overload light to let you know to back off, but the, even with the overload light is on, the sound is not distorted. It's still loud and clear. You also have a feedback eliminator, which you can turn on to try to fight some of the feedback you get when you got the mic right close to the speaker. Um, you got outdoor mode, so when you hit that, it kind of pushes the sound out a little bit further. Um, and then that's about it. Like I said, it's a very simple speaker, but it does the job. Like I've had other uh, Bluetooth speakers. You've seen me in, uh, review the Samson Escape Expedition Plus speaker, and that's a great speaker, but it only has a six inch woofer. This is an eight inch woofer, and it's a little bit more designed in the style of your PA speakers. That other speaker was cool, but I just couldn't use it for much other than a portable scratch session. This speaker I can use for a wedding ceremony. I can use for a cocktail hour. It's got a little bit more bass to it than the six inch uh, Samson speaker. You will see me using this a lot more because it's so portable. It's easy to set up. I can get this thing set up in like five minutes. So um, hopefully this was informative. Keep watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe the video, share it. Leave a comment if you've used something similar to this or if you've got a better system, let's talk about it and share some notes and see. Um, how you're doing it. So until next time, this is your boy Logistical Styles and I am out. Peace.